the news on Holy Family Radio, where we bring you the news with a Catholic perspective. I'm your host, Eleanor Rossman, and with us this week is our good friend, Father Bill Weary. So happy to be in an air-conditioned studio. In, in this studio. In this heat. Uh, but it feels good in here. It's nice to be with you, Eleanor, and with all the viewer, uh, viewers, the uh, listeners out there. Yes. Um, we just really appreciate your perspective. And Thank you. It's just, it's so nice to be in person, you know, I mean, this it is, is whole, I, I'm not going to get into the pandemic stuff mm-hmm. too much, but that's been one of the hardest thing is just not having that person to person contact. That's correct. And that, There's pros and cons, but uh, we won't get into that now. Okay. Um, uh, well, to me, this is a pro. Yes. All right. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, we'll open up with uh, our Pope, our Holy Father, Francis, How about it? is recovering from surgery. Yeah. And I know about this condition, diverticulitis, because some of my family close to me has that, and it is a very painful uh, thing to go through. And he had, it was very bad for him, a kind of stenosis where your diverticula gets uh, inflamed, infected, and then a narrowing. And it's really, I think, probably a resection of his intestine. That is no easy surgery. And he's 84 years old. The man is amazing. He's a trooper. He only he operates on one lung. Oh, I forgot that too. He only yeah. has one lung. Yeah, which with was, anesthesia, I'm sure. He, I know he had general. That was a three-hour operation. The, he is uh, just a, very, a lot of stamina there. Yeah. Uh, I had a the diverticulum in the throat uh, once. A zenker, Ooh. a zenker diverticulum, uh, corrected uh, twice. They had to correct it twice, and it's a pouch that accumulates. Um, debris, and I always had, felt like I had a bubble in the yeah. throat, and I felt I almost choked to death a couple of times, believe oh, it or wow. not. I was by myself, and it catches um, food. Swallowing is uh, very difficult. You have to I be careful. I never heard of that in the throat. I know. Zanker diverticulum, it's called. Wow. Yeah. Well, we, we I'm glad you recovered, and we're praying right. that our Holy Father will recover as well. So he's, as we speak, still in the hospital, right. and we'll just send our prayers his way. Now, We've talked about this topic before. This is a big topic in Catholic circles, and that's this whole controversy about giving Holy Communion Mm -hmm. to politicians who are persistent in promoting abortion. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the way through uh, partial birth abortion, uh, babies born through it after an abortion, and and they say that we can still kill the babies after they're even actually born. So this is a big, big deal. Um, And apparently, uh, President Biden's priest in Washington, well, we know Cardinal Wilton Gregory already told the press he will not withhold communion to President Biden. Now, Father Kevin Gillespie of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Georgetown confirmed that he will give communion to President Mm -hmm. Joe Biden despite his unrepentant radical abortion advocacy. Um, quote, he said, he's a man of faith, and I would give communion to him like any other Catholic coming up for the Eucharist. But in effect, Father, he really isn't like any other Catholic coming up right. to communion because um, he's very public about his position. And doesn't that's, that that's matter? Right. Yes. Well, this is indicative of the split that we, that we are dealing with uh, in the clergy. Uh, I want to say right down the middle. Uh, almost, uh, and and among the the bishops as well. And it's what I preached about last weekend, the tension between the pastoral and the prophetic. Mm. Um, And we used to hear about that in in seminary. The the prophetic is, think Old Testament prophet, if you will, John the Baptist, really, you know, directly confronting sin. Not popular. The pastoral is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, the pastoral uh, is the is the nice guy. Call it good cop, bad cop, if you want. But the pastoral is very, is very agreeable, acceptable, um, cajoling, you know, schmoozing more, which is important. Uh, it's charity uh, in in the in, in the ser- terms of serving the gospel and conveying and conveying the gospel. And if you if you can do it with honey. Uh, then do it. If you can get people to do the right thing pastorally, that's fine. If you can't, then you got to move to the prophetic. Uh, this priest doesn't want to do that. Um, I'm probably, you know, more of the prophetic line. I, I try to be as pastoral as I can, but sometimes you just have to confront a sin and say that's, that's a sin. And, and um, I, you know, I had somebody come up to me and say, people are receiving communion in this parish that should not be receiving communion. This is a parishioner. I said, oh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. 
uh, what, what, what are you talking about? And uh, I thought he was going to talk about, and I said, if, if somebody's cohabitating or if they are, um, if they are in an invalid marriage, I will deal with that. If you know about if, if I, it. And, and he said, no, no, no. It's, uh, a wom- it's a woman who's in a sex club, um, oh, a married mother. woman uh, who's in a um, you know, wife swapping uh, um, club. And I said, well, John, I mean, I can't, I can't deal with that. I mean, maybe she's repented. Uh, maybe, and she's coming up and receiving, and a prominent parishioner coming up and receiving communion. And I said, well, maybe she's repented. And he said, I don't think so. And I said, well, I can't. That's a private thing. So this goes with Biden. I mean, this goes along with what I'm saying. If it's cohabitation, if it's uh, people in, in, in an invalid marriage or, or, or this, mm-hmm. you know, then you, then you deal with it. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, because in this situation, I hear what you're saying. You know, we might hear a rumor about somebody that mm. we go to mass with. We know right, these right, people right. on Sunday to say hello to. We yes. heard something. That's well, a different story. Yeah, he's than, having an affair. Or yeah, she's or having. She's, a, well, I can't. I'm not going right. to go up to them and say. Yeah. Uh, but you, you you do preach the principles, and I've and I said it uh, from the pulpit a couple times now over the last uh, several months because of this issue that if you're in a state of mortal sin, yeah, or if you are cooperating. With mortal sin, you can't receive communion. And cooperation is important too, because if I drive the car for the assassination team, yeah. I can't later say, and the you know the murders get pulled off. I can't later say, hey, I just drove the car. I didn't commit any murders. Right. Well, I, I I cooperate in a very significant way. Mm-hmm. So I think we're in that category with the. Uh, with the politicians, I also want to say, and I've said it before, I just want to give, give a, 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 a recognition how painful this this is for mm-hmm. for clergy, for bishops. What a what a, what a painful, torturous thing uh, this is to deal with, and it is very difficult. Just on the parish level, I know the pushback that you get when you take the prophetic stance, mm-hmm. and a lot of priests will not do it right for that reason. Well, you know, I mean, Jesus kind of warned. He said, you know, if they hate me, they're going to hate you, too. Exactly. So and he said, I've come to, to bring uh, not not peace, but a sword. Right. Mother-in-law it's... against daughter-in-law, father-in-law against son against daughter. And he said, he said, it's going to happen. Here it is. And you know what, too, Father, I'm thinking maybe, well, I, I don't think, I think we need as lay people catechesis. You know, obviously, there are Catholics today who don't really believe in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, that it's really, truly Jesus' body. Yeah, I remember that Pew divinity. Research survey, yeah. Yeah, and so how well. does that happen? I have my own thinking about that is over the years, how reverence for, for Holy Communion diminished and et cetera. But the catechesis from the pulpit, so if you, you don't know particularly maybe about a parishioner, but if you stand up there and preach and say, Marriage between a man and a woman I do. has to be validly right. You know I what I mean? That. Like, so the catechesis is ongoing. Catechesis is ongoing, uh, but uh, a good catechesis heals uh, and addresses defect of the intellect. But then there's defect of the will. You can catechize mm-hmm. until you're blue in the face. Yeah. And people will say, especially in the moral realm, uh, to a large extent, well, I don't care what you say. I don't agree with it. But they can't say they didn't know. That's true. That That's true. Okay. Th- that's Then that's what's necessary. Um, one more thought about this. Uh, Bishop Robert Barron, who's well known, lots of people know him by his... Uh, oh, yeah productions that he does on yes. in Catholicism, very well done. Anyway, a lot of criticism sometimes his way that he's sort of middle of the road, doesn't make waves. But however, he has now come out uh, with a couple of articles and statements regarding the Democratic Party's extreme position on abortion. Yes. He said, you know, if politicians can't even agree to protecting the life of a baby writhing on the table, right. having survived an abortion yes. procedure, he yes. asked recently, then what precisely are we dialoguing about? Quote, if you're truly interested in dialoguing with the church on this crucial matter, show mm-hmm. a little profile and courage and support born alive legislation, he wrote. Yes. If you can take that small step in the direction of protecting Good innocent for him. life... I'll know you're serious about the conversation. So that's that's, that's a step of, in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, if you can't even agree on any limits at all on abortion, yeah, what is the dialogue? Remember the old mantra: 
that the pro-choice, as you just say, it should be uh, uh, safe but rare. Yeah, safe, legal, and rare. Safe, legal, and rare. And so 66 million And that's back when later. they would favor restrictions, and they they favor, they, they supported the Hyde Amendment, a lot of the pro-choices, as, a, as throwing a bone to us. Right. And now they're taking that bone away. Right. But, and, and they came out, you know, the Dem- well, not all the Democrats, but several Catholic Democrats put a statement out to say that, um, you know, bishops do not move forward on this document yeah. and weapon. I hate that that term. Weaponize now. the Eucharist. Yeah, because they yeah. say our Holy Father Pope Francis said that it's not for the perfect, but it's for the those who are sick. Now, you know what? That's, that's a misnomer. That, that is a real twisting. Explain of, that because I think people are grab, grabbing onto that. Well, uh, you know, it, 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 the, the Eucharist. That's one of those uh, phrases. Um, I don't know what kind of fallacy that would be if it'd be a fallacious statement. Eucharist is is not for the uh, not for the perfect. It's for the wounded and the and the sinner. And, and that's a truth, sort of a half truth. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, nevertheless, uh, scripture and tradition are very clear that we're not to receive communion in, in in the state of mortal sin. It's counterindicated. It's like giving a doctor giving uh, uh, improper medicine to to, to somebody. Uh, in the medical terms, that's called counterindication. Mm-hmm. Uh, that if you take that, it's going to do more damage, even though it's medicine. Right. And that's what and that's what the the Eucharist is. It's uh, for venial sin, it, and it does forgive venial sins. But um, it, no, it's true where nobody's perfect. Only God is perfect. But that's not a blank check. Yeah. For anybody to come up and receive communion. We're called uh, to be perfect, but, you know, other than Jesus, I don't know anybody no, that's that, perfect, that's, Father. That, that's right. First Corinthians chapter 11, I keep invoking that, is very clear. Paul is very clear uh, that you, yes. don't receive, you don't receive communion. A, a man must examine himself, or he, or he eats and drinks condemnation. And that's upon, strong language. Upon, him, str- uh, upon himself. Yeah. Uh, about, and that was re- regarding the Eucharist, sacrilegious communions. And we do people no favor. If we just let them come up when we know they're in a state of mortal sin, or, or now some say you can't say that. So sometimes the um, uh, some the, uh, moral theologians say right. grave grave matter. Yeah. If they're involved in grave matter, um, they they have to re- refrain from the Eucharist. Father, we're going to stop for a break real quick, but we'll be back in just a minute. You're listening to In the News with Father Bill Weary, so please stay tuned. Father Bill Weary. Father, you were talking to me before the program today about someone who is, their cause is moving forward. For yes. Beata- tell me, tell us who that is. Uh, Robert Schumann uh, died in 1963 in his late 70s, a former prime minister of France, just declared venerable by Pope Francis. And that means he's on the way to the next step is beatification. And the next step after that is canonization. Uh, venerable means he's passed muster in terms of his uh, personal life, extraordinary holiness. He was, he was very devout. And he uh, formed the predecessor for today's European Union. Huh. And he uh, w- um, founded the um, European, it sounds, know, sounds strange, European Coal and Steel Community, uh, which was the predecessor of the U- European Union. And it was to uh, reduce or eliminate chances of war among uh, uh, in Western Europe by uh, uh, cooperation regarding economics and tariffs, re- eliminating tariffs among the countries and eliminating monopolies and that sort of thing, improving the, the economics and, and instilling a sort of inter- interdependence among the uh, Western European nations, including Germany and all that. So the, supposedly, theoretically, that would reduce or eliminate uh, chances for for war uh, among them because they would all be sort of attached to one another, which is kind of the idea of the European Union. So Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just very interesting. One headline said, um, made, or one editorial made comment that not too many politicians make it uh, into the roles of the sanctified. um, And, uh, but this fellow has, he was an, an expert on Thomas Aquinas and medieval philosophy 
And um, so, and he, and he extolled the writings of Pope Pius XII, uh, with whom he was a, a contemporary. Is there a miracle attributed to him? No, I don't think. No, okay. not yet. No, yet. He needs one for beatification and then one more for canonization. Okay. So I guess he's on the way. So if you've got any prayer needs, pray to him. Robert Schumann, yes. Okay. Um, Father, here's a story that's, um, I would consider more of a local story because it involves Pittsburgh. And it says that uh, Pittsburgh area priests, there's a group that released a statement in support of same-sex unions. Uh, It's called the Association of Pittsburgh Mm -hmm. Priests, argues that the Vatican's March report which we have talked about before, that claim that same-sex unions are sinful was pastorally unacceptable and insensitive to the loving, committed relationships of many of the body of Christ. Quote, we stand with LGBTQ people, reads a statement published by the diocesan-wide organization that claims roughly 300 ordained and non-ordained members. Yes. Now, what, what do they mean diocesan Why? Does that mean, the, what's the affiliation there with the diocese? I guess if they're priests in the diocese, that would be an affiliation. Yes. But it's an I independent know. organization. It's like Where's a, Bishop Zubik on that? Uh, that's, a, that's a group that's formed, um, sort of, uh, I don't think it's an official diocesan organization. I guess they just said diocesan wide. Diocesan wide. They formed themselves on their own. Sort of like, I don't know if you would call it a union. Um, I mean, I don't think they're agitating for a higher salary. And it's, it's issues orientated. Um, they might be, you know, agitating for certain uh, benefits for the priests. But in any case, yes, diocesan wide, it is, it is sad. And this is the uh, split uh, that yeah. I've talked about before. And, um, and I would, uh, you know, I, I, lament, I lament that. I want to write a letter. There's a couple of letters I want to write, one of which is to Cardinal Ladaria, the head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, who came out with that statement that uh, you cannot bless same-sex unions, yeah. and that's what they're complaining about. Mm-hmm. And, there's, uh, and the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith is getting a lot of, a lot of pushback uh, on that. That's why I think we have to affirm, uh, affirm churchmen who come out with orthodox stances. And yes. I, be- I believe that write them letters and and, con- and connected with that, unfortunately, I think this is uh, on, on the agenda with you and me, is Pope Francis writing a, a, a letter to Father James Martin. Yes. Uh, co- uh, you know, uh, commending him on his work. Now, remind our listeners, Father James Father Martin James is a Martin, Jesuit, Jesuit, Jesuit priest, mm-hmm. uh, pro LGBT. Editor of American Magazine. What, he's he's one uh, of involved, you know, one of the editors of American Magazine. Very liberal. Uh, Jesuit. Mm-hmm. And he is very pro LGBTQ. Uh, and... Um, but never speaks of chastity at all uh, in in his work with and never, never mentions the courage movement or which I'm associated with, which which is for same those with same sex attraction, but promoting chastity. Uh, and uh, so the Pope apparently wrote him a, a just wrote him a letter recently commending him on his work, which would not be so bad. I mean, I'm all in favor of, of helping people who are or who are distressed or feel alienated or marginalized. Uh, and, and that's, um, it's hard to see how anybody with uh, same-sex attraction can feel marginalized you know, I, today I, I, because I, it is so mainstream, so prevalent, right. pro, so prevalent. But uh, I, I think, you know, he should mention, I hope the, I didn't see the letter. I did not read the letter. I don't know if it's been publicized, but, you know, he I would. I would it. Father Martin did. I would certainly, uh, if I were the Pope, I'd say, oh, and by the way, uh, don't forget to promote chastity among these people. Well, he left please. that part out. And this is where I wonder, does the Holy Father really know what goes on over here in terms of Father Martin and exactly what he says? I mean, I, you could, I could see somebody saying to the Pope, hey, there's a Jesuit priest. He's uh, very intelligent. He reaches out to the homosexual community, you know, but I wonder if he's really getting the lowdown, you know, on what Father Martin's been doing and saying. One, I, uh, one would wonder about that. I, I don't know. I mean, to go out of his way to write a letter, I wonder who prompted that. I just, that's very disturbing. Yes. Well, uh, the Pope has also come out with some statements uh, that are unsettling. Yeah. Uh, regarding, um, what's the what's the word he, he uses? A strict, you know. A, a rigid. St- rigid. Rigidity. Yeah. Against uh, rigidity, uh, uh, clergy who are too rigid. Um, and the Latin Mass. Yeah, he, he reduced the Latin Mass at uh, St. Peter's Basilica, I know. It was being said uh, in some of the chapels, and he, re- he reduced that. Um, but the, 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 uh, uh, cl- these calls against uh, rigidity, one must wonder what's... Uh, it's kind of vague, but they, you worry about what he might be talking about. Yeah. 
Um, you know, remember Pachamama? Yeah. Okay, Pachamama's back in the news. And for our listeners, now you've got to use your imagination again to remember what that Pachamama looked like. That was Like an up. indigenous naked woman with a pregnant belly that was uh, actually taken into St. Peter's. It was Featured this- at the, uh, it was a, it was a um, Vatican Symposium of Indigenous Peoples, I believe, or yeah. something like that, uh, yeah. a couple of years ago. And it was this idol-like figure. She was like figurine. a goddess. It's what she's considered that, in the that was, uh, in the Amazon. Um, in some of the liturgical uh, uh, ceremonies uh, was... Uh, uh, included in those as a as sort of an icon. Well, she showed up. And then don't forget that some people, some devout Catholics, took it and threw it into the water. Yeah. Remember and, that? But the F- Holy Father sent them to go dig, uh, they, dig they them They out think they, they recovered. They, they reco- did recover Recover them. it from the water. We still scratch our head over that one. Okay, so Pachamama, or Mother Earth, that image, um, was recently used as a monstrance yes. in a Catholic church in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Pictures posted by Father Jose Gonzalez on Facebook and later deleted, and I saw the monstrance, you know, it's where her pregnant belly is, is where they have the uh, Eucharist. Consecrated host. Um, now, the pastor of that parish said that he didn't Disavow, know about it. Disavows it. it. Um, and he didn't authorize the use of a monstrance like that. Um, he said it doesn't belong to this parish. You know, I'm sure he's got to have something to say with whoever took over his masses when he was on vacation. Yeah. That he would think that this would be okay. Right. I mean, it just it, it just blows my mind. It's a yeah, very very sad thing, and it, we, we must remember, especially in the Old Testament, uh, the how God would through the prophets inveigh against idol- idolatry. <sighs> that was one of the big things that would drive God up the wall. You're not kidding. And I've been listening to a, a podcast with Father Mike Schmitz with Ascension Press on Bible in a year. So every day he's reading an Old Testament. Always a psalm, sometimes New Testament, and you, I mean kings, holy mackerel! Oh, yeah. I mean, you just one after yes. the other with the idols, the idols, but a idols, lot of these idols. kings. I, you wonder what the attraction was. I don't uh, get I, it. I don't get it either. Uh, well, sometimes it was associated with sexual rituals. Actually, okay, they would ha- they would have um, ceremonialized with a, with um, temple prostitutes. Uh, uh, so that would be an attraction, I, you know, I, I could see. Mm-hmm. But also, it was just if the crops aren't doing well, you know, and the, um, the the cattle aren't doing well, well, maybe the one true God's not really on our side. Let's go to these other gods mm. who maybe can deliver for us. And we don't exactly do it that way today. Uh, I, there's an idol of, of money, success, popularity. But we do lack faith. And we, that's, do, we do lack faith. And that's what happened in the Old Testament, too. They just didn't trust him. And the other thing that would uh, associate with these false gods was human sacrifice at times mm-hmm. and child sacrifice. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Abortion today. Yeah. You know, and um, God. Yeah, don't would, we have our idols? Yes. Um, f- lastly, um, this is sad. This is a former patient. Sh- she spoke out about a gender transition that went bad. Um, and she says, Grace Lindinsky Smith said, you know, ac- activists may not want to admit it, but I'm not alone in my regret. Wow. Um, she said, and she had the most supportive possible environment for transitioning, easy access to hormones and affirming community insurance coverage. She said, what I didn't have was a therapist who could help me scrutinize the underlying issues I had before I undertook serious medical decisions. Instead, I was de- diagnosed with gender dysphoria and given the green light to start transition by my doctor on the first visit. Wow. Folks. And at least she was of age. What really worries me is some of the uh, under underage uh, people that are having this done with the permission of their parents. But how old was she when she started? Didn't say that didn't in, in say. the article that I said. And that's, that's what's so, so sad is that these yeah. teenagers, essentially, certainly are questioning their gender. Maybe they're, and it's a lot of it seems to be going on on, on the internet, you know, these kind of small communities, and it's a way of like, gee, it's a strange way of making friends. But you know what I mean? Some people are looking for small communities that they can attach to. And kids question things when they're teenagers. Well, it's, we're losing a sense of the sanctity of the human body. Yeah. Uh, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, when we're baptized, uh, anyway... But we have immortal souls, but we, we have bodies that are created by God and are to be re- treated with, with, with respect. Uh, they're not like candy wrappers to, to be crumpled up and thrown away. Mm-hmm. And um, getting, we get in a sense of that, too, with, uh, with cre- certain uh, aspects of cremation and burial. I mean, c- cremation is permitted now. 
Because after all, you, you can die in a fire and be uh, be cremated um, involuntarily. But so many people then want to take the ashes and just yeah. dump them dump, over into the dump Susquehanna. Dump them in the Susquehanna, dump, uh, th- uh, throw them out in of a, a necklace. In a, a necklace or a ring. Or keep a, a grandma and grandpa on, in the li- on the living room shelf. Uh, some spouses are keeping their deceased until I die. Uh, we're going to be buried together. I'm keeping my husband on the shelf in in in, in uh, cre- uh, cremains. Well, on, I, I have on to the say shelf. that once I had I was a Eucharistic minister for one time, and I had a woman that I would take to communion. Her, she lived with her daughter, and the daughter was mentioning about her um, common law husband. Um, and she said, you know, he died several years ago. And she pointed over to the armoire. And she said, well, there's my old cat. She's up there in that urn, and next to her is next my common-law husband. husband. I was like, oh, husband. my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. And, and everybody remind everybody, uh, cremation is permitted, but uh, the Catholic Church says we are to we are to respectfully inter uh, the uh, cremains in a, mo- in a mausoleum, a, cre- uh, a uh, columbarium, or in the, in the ground. And we're out of time for our program this week, but join us every Thursday at noon for In the News on Holy Family Radio. Father, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.